Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're checking out insane new design trends from the likes of Apple, different governments of the countries even, and one which is literally starting a new career path for a lot of people. So without further ado, let's just get started with the video. By the way, I have started doing one-on-one -on -one sessions on TopMate. So if you really wanna get into it and you wanna book a session with me, either on social media, career guidance, UXY, there are a lot of things that I do and you already know. So you can always book a session with me. There will be a link in the description to start booking today. All right, so the first design trend is by Apple and I always like to see what they are up to. Recently, they launched their iPhone 17 and with that came a new trend on their website. I'm calling it a, this is a new carousel style which they are officially introducing on their website which allows you to quickly just, you know, take some actions inside the carousel like this. And this is, instead of being a horizontal carousel, is sort of a vertical carousel, which shows all different kinds of features, which of course you can interact with as well. So if it's interactable, it will be. If it's not interactive, it will just show like an image, so as to say. So I think this is a very cool use of space where you can show so many things in a small carousel-like experience. And this new style of carousel is very interesting because I personally have never seen such a carousel style before. And the fact that it can display so much information in less space is also fascinating. I've opened up the mobile view on my desktop here. And as you can see on mobile, it's very good as well. The carousel is just this carousel at the bottom. And if you just hover over it or click, click or press something like this, it will open up as so, and then you can navigate as such. I think this is a very interesting use of space. Once again, it works very well on mobile as well as on desktop. So one of those design trends that work well on different device sizes. Impressed. I'm impressed. All right, so the next trend essentially is a lot of different com countries, their governments focusing in on UX design. There's a huge push to the UX design career as more and more people will get to know about this as well. It's called, for example, this one is from the Indian government just launched, just released maybe a few weeks ago. And it's called UX 4G. And it's basically a design system built for the upcoming tools that India creates or Indian companies create or even Indian governments create. This is a PDF I can download it, which takes you through all different the design system essentially the design principles being used accessibility efficiency user friendliness there's a lot of jargon being used here which i'm pretty optimistic about because this is something that can really help not only our country's design system but a lot of other design systems will follow suit a lot of countries already have their own design systems some european countries come to mind like switzerland italy etc they have their own design systems but india as a country is definitely a leap in the right direction for sure. The design system in itself has complete documentation from forms to components to everything that you really need in this nice little neat format and you have both code and of course the design. This is also available for Figma. So if just UI designers need to design, they can from here of course. Recently Zurich has introduced something called a Zurich card. So if you ever been to Switzerland, this is called a Zurich card. A lot of European countries have a daily card or even a weekly monthly card where you get access to all the important places where a tourist can go is basically embedded inside this. It comes off very interesting because it's being used almost as like a brand for Zurich. As you can see, the card works perfectly well. A very neat little example. I'll, I'll, of course, show some on screen on how it is being created. They have the entire website dedicated as well. I'll show that in the background as well. But the Zurich card is a very nice little representation of how tourism can be done, right? And it acts almost as a map for tourists, but I love map designs and this is just very close to my heart as well. Another great example of this is of course the Swiss passport, the new Swiss passport is basically a work of art. It's a piece of art. It's something that two famous artists have worked on as well. With the Swiss map, along with the Alps, the rivers, the lakes, everything is embedded inside the passport with every page having something unique. 
For example, one of the pages showcases whether designers actually showcase the journey from each river, from one river to the other, journeying through Alps, through the cantons. And it's basically under UV light, you can see all the different colors pop up. So it's kind of like an organized, an organized guide for travel in a way. But wow, this looks exceptional. A lot of other countries, governments will follow suit. And I just want to sh showcase how governments are also pulling through with UX design and design in general is becoming so important throughout governments as well. I always say that UX design is something that follows technological advancement. Recently, there's a technological advancement in Lottie animations, essentially. Lottie animations can now take place based on conditionals, variables being, of course, inserted, inputs. So if a user gives an input, and based on different kinds of conditions and states that is there on the app or the website. So instead of having 100 different Lottie animations for different situations, you can have one Lottie animation which does 100 different things based on the situation. And this is a huge step forward because till date, Lottie files or Lottie animations in general were treated as just visuals, as just, okay, these are animations that can help design or visual design, but that's, that was it. But now with actual functionality, logic, nodes, basically playing around with all these nodes, you are literally taking Lottie animations to the next level. They've even invented sort of their own file format called Dot .lottie, which is super lightweight. It barely takes any space on an app or on a website. And at the same time, it's super smooth, super fast, and has all this functionality built in. I see other companies also sort of following this pattern. Lottie Labs has AI, of course, at the center of their tool, which is creating all these functional Lotties as well. Similarly, we see the same thing with Rive. Rive is also its own file format, but is essentially Lottie animations. And they are functional, they're logical, they can take input from the users. They're, of course, building on that. It's still in its initial stages, but this is a huge trend. Building animations which are functional, is the next big trend. These are literally just Lottie files that can be put and the developer needs to do 0% of the work here. Unless of course you're connecting it to existing code. This month, another huge trend is MCP servers becoming mainstream. Essentially MCP servers is like a middleman between your favorite design tool like Figma, for example, and your favorite AI tool. And what this allows you to do is connect your design tools to AI and then create stuff on the AI side with your designs in mind. So in the new Figma update, you can basically connect Figma to Claude. And not only that, you can instantly ask Claude to take design your designs from references, generate a design system on the front end or on the coding side, and then be able to create apps and websites based on those designs. So it, can, so it can directly build whatever you've built on Figma as a real life program app, or it can take your designs and based on that designs, build something new as well. The same thing is coming to life with Cursor. And Cursor is an app dedicated to wipe coding. And this is just works perfectly with Figma's new MCP servers. Huge props to Figma for actually bringing this. We are seeing other tools also work on such MCP servers, including there is a plugin for Framer called MCP straight up. Basically allows you to connect to any AI from inside Framer. And in Framer, it works very well because Essentially, what you can do is ask the AI to also tweak your framer as well. That's how they're defining it here. And again, works with Claude and Cursor very well. So they've already stated that. Of course, other tools will follow suit, just like other people, just like companies follow Apple, Apple follows Android, you know, this kind of works around that. Now talking about how AI is really taking over careers. It's actually enhancing one here. It's called wipe coding and I has invented this essentially. Wipe coding is becoming a massive deal. It's becoming a career path with actual jobs out there for wipe coders or for developers or designers with wipe coding knowledge and experience. You are basically being able to create tools, products, etc., without code essentially if the wipe coding platform is good enough. It's going to produce something really good with that. So there's, there's this 
project called Awesome Vibe Coding on GitHub, all the way on GitHub. With everything that you need to l learn or know about Vibe Coding in all different languages as well. With 13 contributors working on this, and the concept is simple, they have all the tools that you need, you have tutorials, courses, everything that you need, even news that is taking place. So if you want to keep up with, you know, prompt engineering or wipe coding, things like that, you can do from this nice little GitHub project here. Apart from that, there are actual companies who are paying you to create tools. A lot of tools like Lovable have their own hackathons going on from time to time, trying to make more people enter this whole space of wipe coding and of course getting a lot of data from them that's for sure but apart from that they also have their own learning platform a lot of these wipe coding platforms have their own learn tab as well just like them and they have something called launchpad where they feature the best projects and they also give you credits so that's pretty cool as well now this is really you know pushing this narrative that ai is going to take over jobs but in this situation it's a positive thing because it's building a job if you get my gist it's basically building a career path for a lot of people in the future be ready as a developer or even a designer to have this skill set to have this wipe coding skill set and this is i think a massive trend because it's beyond just visuals in this case it is an entire career trend that is forming recently so I think go ahead, check out all these hackathons that, that are taking place. Just search for wipe coding hackathon. You'll get a billion of those going on. But a really cool career path for a lot of people in the future, for sure. Getting back to visual design, there's a new design trend which is really popped up. A lot of new a lot of tools are building this as a feature as well, like Webflow, Framer, etc. It's called text tagger animation. And essentially it's what you see here on screen where text essentially staggers in like this. And it can be very useful like this. It, it can replace existing text or it can highlight new text essentially, if you get my gist. It can act on hover as well, like this really cool project by Elijah Van Eck. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, but again, really cool animations as well but apart from that it's great for storytelling you can showcase multiple things on the same screen with staggering taking place as you scroll like so where things expand i will show a few more examples on screen where text staggering is essentially telling a story as you scroll and that essentially is contributing to the user experience of the website. But apart from that, also helping the user or nudging the user to scroll more. As they scroll, things get highlighted, text gets highlighted or appears magically. In fact, there are a lot of inbuilt features in tools like Framer and Webflow pertaining to text stagger animations. In fact, there are plugins that can do the same and there are ways to do it in Figma as well. So text stagger animations for storytelling is very bright, is something which is very useful to me as well. And I absolutely love how text tagger animations are playing a role in showing, showcasing a product's features as well. So it can work in a product company, in a service-based company, it can work anywhere for any project. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Sorry, the lighting's a little off today, but apart from that, if you wanna show support to this video, make sure you share it and like hit the like button man that's that is huge for any video is for you guys to hit the like button if there's a particular design trend you want to see on this channel or if you found something which is unique please let me know in the comments please share links or whatever it is and i would love to kind of showcase that in the future videos apart from that make sure you subscribe for videos every week and i'll see you in the next video until next time take care god bless